Hey folks, it's Sam. And as you can see, I'm here with Casey Scott of Gold Star Astrology. And we're going to be talking about the Jupiter in Pisces, um, 60 years of this uh, transit. Um, Casey's done some great research going back over the last five um, transits of Jupiter in Pisces. Um, and so we're going to break all that out. Casey, welcome. How are you doing today? Hi, Sam. Thanks for having me and uh, welcome, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking the time, Casey. He's, he's um, you know, he's a busy man. So absolutely, definitely appreciate it. So as you see here on this slide, we have a lot of figures here. JFK, the Beatles, Gerald Ford, Bill Clinton. If you don't know this guy with his hand raised, his name is Ollie North. Martin Luther King says a lot of historical um, stuff that we're going to be looking at. Um, before we get to that, though, I do want to go over a few things here. Again, these are these are presentations that we do on this channel, bring people like Casey here. If you do like this, please, you know, like, subscribe, share the video, ring the bell to get notified of videos like this. You know, I do them once a week, twice a week, um, and it's all for free, um, and it's a way to really learn astrology. Um, also, I have a couple links here for um, these 2022 forecasts. Um, there's this free forecast uh, that you can get. I just dropped a link in the comments if you haven't gotten it yet. 2022 vedicastrology.com. As you can see, in 2022, I went through the 10 most important shifts that you must know. We're only here. It's only early April. Got a long way to go, folks. Strap in, right? And so again, we already talked about this, um, you know, the nodes changing signs, but you know, upcoming, we have Saturn poking his head into Aquarius. We have these eclipses coming up, Mars, Rahu in the summer, um, Saturn, Jupiter, both retrograde at the same time, all kinds of stuff coming up. Again, this is a free forecast to just let you know about these things. But then you can also get your personal forecast where I analyze those 10 most important shifts for your sign. Because again, if you're a Gemini like me, all that stuff's happening in one area, you know, Jupiter's moving into Pisces in my 10th house. If you're Casey Scorpio, Jupiter's moving into his fifth house. If you're, you know, a Leo, Jupiter's moving into your eighth house. So all that's different. So all of these 10 most important shifts are going to affect you totally differently based on your ascendant. So again, you can go to that link, 2022vedicastrology.com. Less than 20 bucks, you can get me talking about that for your sign and all 12 signs. So again, it's a great way to really stay in touch and in tune with these major shifts throughout the year. And if you don't think we're having major shifts, look around you. <laughs> and so based on your ascendant, it's really affecting you, um, you know, in one way, you know, a lot more so than others. So we'll leave it at that and bring Casey in. He's got some great, he's done some excellent research. You know, I've been doing this throughout the years as well. I always go back and look, but he's, he's really becoming well known and, um, celebrated for, you know, really charting this stuff out. So we're going to bring him in and have him take us through some of these big themes. Yeah, Sam, uh, it's fun for me to do this because I grew up in Canada, right? So a lot of my U.S. history is, is pretty rough. And so these these types of things are a good opportunity to go back and kind of look at the the themes and the history and and when you've got it, like, because I didn't really like history in school because it was so boring, but like this gives it some purpose and you're you're looking for things. And uh, I think it's an important practice when you're you're doing astrology, you're starting astrology, you're talking about Jupiter and Pisces. And, you know, there's this tendency just to keep it up here, right up, up in the in the text and you're going through everything theoretically but it's uh easy to forget that it's it does it every 12 years so all you have to do is go back 12 years and look at what happened in you know on in the headlines on in history and then also you can go back you know if you're a little older you can go back and look in your life and be like wow that's these themes really are prominent when you're looking at it yeah and these so touchstones this is why i've always done this as well because again we can keep it all very abstract and, and all, and, you know, already did a Jupiter and Pisces relative to spirituality and what, how we can deal with it as a spiritual being. But again, when you, you know, when we really want to learn it, we all live in the world and the transits show our collective karma, how we experience it. So it's a great, it really makes it 
um, you know, something that's real and actual and not just theoretical when you go back and look at the events. So that's a great practice. Yeah, your uh, your video with with Elise was really good for, you know, exploring those higher potentials and the things that you can do to kind of get yourself operating at that higher vibration. But this is good to kind of like bring it down to earth and see how it usually expresses itself in the actual world that we're living in so that you can get a a taste for yes the higher vibration and what the potential of jupiter and pisces but like the actually how it actually manifests in the world that we're living in gives you that edge as far as when you're doing readings for people that don't really understand that higher vibration or have that yeah grasp well you also it. see the events you also see the vibration in the events, like for example, this first one, you know, you have Beatlemania, MLK. These are huge things. Yeah. These were big inspirations that came in. People all have often heard me say, and I'll just reinforce it again, that much of the, you know, Jupiter is not just spiritual gurus and teachers. It's what's inspiring us. And in this world, a lot of that turns into these political figures, you know, politics. They're not often worthy of our praise and of our, of our admiration, but, you know, especially people that inspire us like these great musicians and artists and of course leaders like MLK very much Jupiterian figures JFK was unfortunately assassinated that first um, section um, there uh, from uh, 60 years ago yeah and the uh, the thing about that 60 years ago is that it's a tr it's a return for Jupiter and then also Saturn right so there's a real strong thing to those two most stable planets in the sky so that really gives you a good flavor for what's uh what to kind of expect as far as you can get two big pieces of the puzzle in place to kind of understand how things are coming about right yeah so what casey's saying is that every 60 years the jupiter and saturn return to their same place because it's a 30 year jupiter recurrent i'm sorry 30 year saturn return and a five or it's a double saturn return and a five and a five fold jupiter return yeah. so let's just read through the things on this first slide and then we'll talk about them let's just kind of go down them just very systematically and then we'll talk about them in general yeah exactly because when you're looking at the history you're kind of wanting to see some of the flavor Trends. of jupiter and pisces which has that kind of what we call that dreamy imagination that inspiration and intuition right but also kind of that i'd have that in red is it can also show up as like illusion and fantasy and this kind of isolation and hermit type of mentality and because pisces is this kind of things will work out on their own type of, it can be that victim mindset right so you know we see beetle mania happened right there when jupiter hit pisces was when they released their first album and then during that whole year, they went on the Ed Sullivan show and the, just the hype, right? It turned into this hysteria. They called it Beatle mania. And then uh, during that time, we also had uh, Martin Luther King. He uh, was arrested in Birmingham and then on the slopes of uh, Washington, D.C. He had, I have a dream, right? You see that dream theme come out there, right there. And uh, so JFK also did his civil rights address because he was on board with the Martin Luther King, you know, even before he got elected, he got him out of jail before that because he liked what he was doing. And uh, but then unfortunately, you also see the assassination happen during Jupiter's transit in 90, 1963, 64 is like December, I believe, when that happened. And then it was uh, November. It was okay. November 22nd. Yeah, there you go. That's fine. Yeah. 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 And then um, and then lee harvey oswald got assassinated and then also you see the pope the new pope and then um the buddhist crisis in south vietnam you know when they were setting themselves on fire and all that all that stuff was happening the precursor to when like because the vietnam war was a long war but like the in earnest didn't happen until a couple years after that right but this was when it started to really pump up and get more um get more hype and um just kind of to put it in context it was just after the cuban missile crisis right so the cuban missile crisis was the closest in the cold war that we came to having that nuclear holocaust right 
And if you just kind of put that into perspective, we just here in the last month or two had that exact same, you know, fears and tensions. And, you know, we were all both had their finger on the button going, you know, make your move. And it got really tense there, almost a, a big parallel to what we saw in the Cuban Missile Crisis. So then, um, you know, the next time around in 1975, we had um, the beginning of the Lebanese Civil War and the fall of Saigon. And Actually, let me bring up the chart real quick. Sorry about that. Let me just bring up the chart real quick. Yeah. I meant to do that. I was doing that behind the scenes. So okay. this is like that 63 transit. Um, you see Jupiter here. This is this is right before um, JFK was assassinated. This is right. the November one. But if you go back, you can see Jupiter went in. So we can run the chart here and see. Poked his head in there. Like you say, it was like an early uh, 63. This was like around when the Beatlemania stuff started, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then and then we had the other things, the MLK. All that stuff happened. Think of how transformative that was for the world. It yeah. was a total touchstone in our world. All Martin right. Luther King getting arrested and then the I Have a Dream and all this. We This is still talked about now. But yeah, again, look cool. at how it's exploited and how it's used as propaganda as well. I mean, I, it's crazy how like even every conservative Republican who wants to take away your health care quotes Martin Luther King. You know, I mean, it's just con it's just used as a meme now. It's not it, it's totally lost its relevance, for example. But it but I mean, it's it, it really penetrated culture to that degree. And then you go forward. And then by the end of the year, again, ML, um, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. It was November 22nd. So it was, you know, like right after this. Yeah. So again, you see Saturn and Jupiter were there at this time and they're where they are in the sky right now. That's the 60 year recurrence. So as we go through, Saturn isn't going to be here the whole time. So I just wanted to bring that up so that people see it. So yeah, yeah let's sure. go on to that and second one, Casey. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, and then 1975 was the next time, you know, Jupiter went through the whole zodiac and then comes back in 1975. And um, like I said, the Lebanese Civil War began, the fall of Saigon, which had a lot of parallels to the Afghanistan, you know, the fall of Afghanistan that just happened this past six months ago. And uh, the timing of it, if the, you know, Afghanistan fell a lot faster than Vietnam did, but like the same sort of energy happened before the Jupiter and Pisces transit where like the, the government lost the will to kind of keep keep going and keep supporting the the South Vietnam and the South Vietnam was kind of like a propped up puppet government that ended up just crumbling under the the pressure. So it was it's a lot of parallels. Well, the parallel the also the biggest parallel is the U.S. Dis the embarrassment of the U.S. Yeah. in their in a retreat because it was shocking to see people hanging off of helicopters as yeah. we barely got out with our lives. It was the same thing in Afghanistan. That was the image that really, that's it, as much as anything, that's the kind of shameful parallel where you made everyone question, why the hell do we even do all of this? And right. what kind of leadership? Again, of course, Biden has paid for it pretty heavily because, but again, you also have to, I say, give him credit because at least he ended the damn thing. Like, why were we there that long? Right. And how are we going to get out? At least he said, look, I know it looks bad. <laughs> it's embarrassing, but we need to get out of here. And, and again, it could have been handled better, blah, 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 all that. But yeah. at least he did it. At least we're out of there. Um, and, you know, how much more blood were we going to shed and money were we going to spend doing that? So yeah. same, but it, these are, these are also the parallels with South Vietnam. So yeah, a lot of parallels there. And, um, you know, the second half of that transit, there were two assassination attempts, both by women, right? The only time that in our whole history that there was an assassination attempt by women, both in that one year period, right? So, and then um, one of the things that I was thinking of as you were talking about is like, if we're talking about Jupiter, one end of the spectrum is that great hope and dreams and inspiration but the other end of the sp spectrum is that disappointment embarrassment the shame right that that's a big jupiter theme also right I talk about it all the time right. it's 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 that hope disappointment cycle it yeah. comes crashing down and this is one of the things that's not talked about enough about jupiter is the disappointment 
And again, this is why you can also see the, the tension between Jupiter and Venus. Because <laughs> Venus is where we, th oh, the relationship is going to be this thing. And Jupiter's like, it's not. There's nothing of this world that's going to connect you to God. It's, this world is always going to disappoint you a little bit. Yeah. So that's a very astute observation. And again, the thing that happens when planets go in their own signs, they become very elevated and the potential gets ratcheted up. So we become aware of the difference between what we were hoping for and reality. And that's how Jupiter teaches us, actually. The reason you have a higher spirituality is because the things you believed in before didn't work out. They disappointed you. You were disappointed in your parents, in your religion, in your this, in your that. And you kept searching and searching. And it led you to, of course, me. No. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me i will disappoint you also <laughs> no right this, but, no but, we always want to be known to some people to try and doing our best right don't yeah, right. make that into anything other than that <laughs> right so but it's that hope and disappointment cycle of jupiter so it's great to really understand and that um the assassination attempts uh, and it was Gerald Ford. There were two assassination attempts. One was by Squeaky Fromm, who was in the Manson gang. I don't remember the other lady. But, she um, was also Manson, too, related to the same thing. Oh, they both were? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, yeah, so you could see this was the next time that Jupiter went through around that time. Um, and so it entered, and you see it went retrograde. This is what Casey was talking about. It poked its head in there around this time, like early 75. Then Jupiter you know, went through and then he poked his head in Aries and then went back. By the way, in this transit, Jupiter's not going to poke his head into Aries. He's in there the whole time. Yeah. So um, this is that cycle. And yeah, and then, really great observation there, there. I'm sorry, go ahead. Something there on 75 is uh, in the summer of 74, the kind of leading up to that was the big Watergate scandal. Yeah. And uh, the whole thing regarding that and uh that was a big deal also like we still talk about that just as much as we talk about any of that stuff that we well, talked about this is the, yeah and of course i i lived it so 74 wasn't just that's that's when nixon actually left office in disgrace but yeah. the watergate scandal came started even like in the mid 73 um early mid 73 we watched it in school so it led to him actually leaving office in um, August of 1974. So that was Jupiter going through Aquarius. And that's what led to Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford wasn't elected. He was he was the vice president after Nixon resigned in disgrace, which, by the way, it's good that he did resign in disgrace because he, and it's also a time when he resigned because his Republicans, the Republicans in Congress went to him and said, resign. We're not going to protect you anymore. You're, we're going to impeach you. We don't have that kind of integrity and ethic anymore, by the way. People who haven't didn't live through that, who don't realize and don't remember, oh, it's always been bad. They're always this. It's all that. Actually, it's not true. There was actually real patriotism and integrity in the midst of all of the corruption a long time ago. Nixon being impeached is a great example of that. <clears throat> so yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's also a great bit of con of uh, context of Jupiter and Aquarius right before. And just to show you that what happens when Jupiter's going through Saturn's two signs, there can be that, like you talked about in your past, it's like you, the leaders and the role models, right? That's what Jupiter is, is leaders and role models are like disappointing us, right? They're, they're not leading us in a way, direction we want to go. And then when Jupiter hits Pisces, it's bring in all the karma, right? That's what a strong planet is, is to be able to deliver the, the goods, right? And so when you're carrying all this negative karma into it, Jupiter and Pisces is going to show you, right? It's going to bring that, whether you've been using it well or not well, it's going to show, right? It's going to give the results of... And even with the Jupiter and Aquarius, like we just saw before, this is when Kennedy had a lot of problems. I mean, he wound up being assassinated and now he's lionized or he's, you know idolized but and and he and he was in his time he was very popular also you know very charismatic but cuban missile crisis all this other stuff he was he would he this happened right before jupiter went into pisces so again the leaders disappointing us he was elected a wave of hope charismatic leader and then it's like oh this guy you know he was embarrassed on the world stage by khrushchev who said we will bury you and all this this is really also, how can he looked overmatched? This is why the Russians pushed it and tried to get missiles into Cuba because they're like, well, the U.S. has elected this kid 
where you know he what you know what the hell is Kennedy going to do? We're just going to blow over him. And then Kennedy had the backbone and stood up. But again, this was the Jupiter through the Saturn ruled signs because Kennedy was elected when Jupiter was in Sagittarius, not Capricorn. Mm -hmm. so again we could go back this could be forever but we're just keeping the same themes the same kind of thing nixon in 72 was elected landslide i don't think i think george mcgovern won one state it was his own state nixon won by a landslide in 72 and then 73 74 was water came and left office so that was jupiter going through saturn signs so yeah. nixon was very popular his second term when he was elected so same theme and, you know, just to, you said it well there, is that the Soviets really saw Kennedy as a weak, you know, a weakness, and they pressed, they, it emboldened them to kind of put the pressure on, and a lot of that, a similar thing happened with Biden, where, you know, Putin sees like a kind of senile old grandpa that can't figure it out, and it doesn't, isn't strong enough to stand up to him toe to toe, and so... I wonder how much of that went into the same mentality is like could very well be could yeah. very well be but biden actually really showed he he's done great rallying the world around him and it's kind of caused some whiplash last thing and then we'll move on to the next one but also because you're talking about soviet era also kennedy came after eisenhower who was the two-term general who basically won the world won world war ii for the us he was like the general so after Eisenhower, they were like, oh, they got this general. We better watch it. Then Kennedy comes, this young, charismatic kid. This is how Khrushchev was like, um, you know, OK, well, what do we got to worry? We don't have this badass general anymore. We got this kid. So let's push it. Yeah. So yeah. all this context is is very important. So, yeah. And again, this is why we study. This is why you study history and events when you're looking at these transits and not just psychology. So, yeah, yeah let's no. go on to the next. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. We're going on the next one. Yeah. 1987, we had uh, Reagan dealing with the uh, Iran scandal, the arms for hostage deal, where uh, they call it the Iran Contra scandal. And uh, it was a big deal. Like, I hadn't really heard of it. I was I was little back then, but I hadn't really heard of it. But you were talking about that. That was a, that was a real big deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a big deal here, especially, you know, at that time I was in my early 20s. And I remember it. I mean, I we'd already endured four years of Reagan. Then Reagan gets reelected in eighty in um, eighty four on a landslide. Then by the time he was almost done, this was like eighty seven. You know, you could tell he was in uh, decline, and and we were all over the place. Um, so and then this thing came out. And it's like, of course, selling arms to ho for hostage trading arms for hostages, sell them to the Sandinistas in Nicaragua. I and mean, it's like, okay, and nothing really happened. And, and this patriot Oliver North stands up going, yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. And because he was said it with conviction and he was a patriot, there was basically a shadow government subverting Congress and really nothing happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, that's, there's that disappointment again, you know, where. Um, but also one of these uh, events that still kind of culturally significant is the Reagan saying, tear down that wall, the speech in Berlin. And uh, that was also the time where the Soviet Union was trying out, like they were realizing that the the communism wasn't working. And so they tried to mix economy and then the Iron Curtain starts to fall. So like you see those themes with the the West and East with the communism and uh, and the, you know, our free market type of thing that is has been a theme ever since the end of World War Two, but still like really potent in this uh in these different transits yeah and they this was this was a big time of what they call perestroika at the time with between reagan and gorbachev this was a time where that thawing um and i wonder if this was probably the time when they did a um um i'm gonna just google here reagan gorbachev summit um when exactly they happened um was probably a little bit earlier. I think it was, it was 86 Reykjavik, October 86. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. The, the Gorbachev was, uh, during the Aquarius, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Aquarius. So it was in the, it was in the aftermath of that, um, as well, just to yeah. bring up. So here's the chart we're talking about. This was, this, this is like early 87 and then Jupiter goes in February 87 
And you see Saturn is now over here um, at that time. And then, so again, you can also look at the Jupiter Saturns, you know, and the, and, and their, and their relationship. Saturn was in Scorpio then, but you see, this is that transit. Jupiter did go into Aries and he goes back into Pisces again during and this time. Rahu that whole time too, right? So there's the, that extra potential for crazy stuff to happen in that. Yeah, so this is this this can really this is a Guru Chandala yoga in the sky, and this is also that kind of scandal, this whole shadow government going on. What was happening at that time, especially like with U.S. politics and whatnot, there was a lot of stuff there. There it was a big scandal. Again, Ed Meese, who was the um, secretary, who was the attorney general, wound up. I don't did he resign? I don't remember. Casey, who was the CIA director, it was the whole. It was all of what we now call the deep state. Again, this is why this stuff that. What's recently happened and exploded with all the conspiracies and whatnot. This stuff has been around a long time. Some of us have been watching it for a long time. And you you want to see scandals? Go back and look at this scandal. Go back and look at Iran Contra. You want to see a scandal in deep state? Look at that. <laughs> you had Ali North, who was who he was running a government, a separate government out of the basement of the White House. And they found out about it. And the CIA director, Attorney General, everybody. Joe, by the way, Vice President George Bush. Yeah. All of them. And they went yeah. for Congress and they admitted it all and nothing happened <laughs> to them. In fact, George Bush was reelected or I mean, George Bush was elected president. And then he and, pardoned everybody. Yeah. Huh? And then he pardoned everybody. And then he pardoned, especially yeah. Casper Weinberger, who was secretary of defense. Again, I'm, I'm sort of conjuring it up now, old memories, but we've been watching this stuff for a long time. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so, um, this is this uh, Guru Chandala Yoga. Rahu Jupiter was in Pisces at that time. This is called Guru Chandala Yoga, where our gurus and our leaders, we see their deception. We lose faith in them and things like that. So that 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 was huge. It was the biggest scandal since Watergate. And in many ways, it was worse because what what Nixon did. I mean, it was worse in the context of, again, running a whole shadow government going against Congress because Congress passed a law that said we're not going to interfere with the San Anise, with the civil war in Nicaragua. And what this what this shadow government did was subvert that. They didn't like that decision. So Ali North said, well, we'll sell some obsolete weapons to Iran and take that money and funnel it to this shadow government, to this this um this uh, resistance movement even though congress said we're not going to do that so they totally subverted the will by selling illegal arms to an enemy to also get some hostages back and then taking that money and funding a resistance movement in central america that the congress said we're not going to do <laughs> so it's like <laughs> as corrupt as you could imagine and everybody knew it yeah. they all knew it and it was proven right yeah the guy stood up and said, yeah, we did it. Cause, and he was a patriot. And it was all for the cameras. It was such propaganda BS. But this was the 80s. This was Reagan's 80s. And this is the stuff that you know happened right when I graduated high school. I'm like, I can't believe this stuff. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> if we move on to the next one in 1998, um, Sorry. Yeah. There, there we go. Yeah. So in 1998, we saw uh, Pakistan become a nuclear power, and then um, there was a big earthquake in Papua New Guinea, and then the M U.S. embassy bombings by in in the 90s were there by Bin Laden, and this is all leading up to 2001 too, right when the terror attack happened, and then there was a a ceasefire by the IRA, which ended uh, troubles. That was a that was a big deal there too. Where for a long time the IRA in, in Ireland, the, there was a lot of bombings happening for a long time. So then you know we had the Bill Clinton impeachment proceedings going on. He was acquitted. So that that was talking about the time before that, like when Jupiter was in Aquarius. In Aquarius, we had the. Mona Lewinsky scandal, the Drudge Report, all that came up during that. And then this was at the end of that. And he was acquitted of the impeachment proceedings there. And then um, another interesting thing that I saw was that Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic joined NATO. And then NATO got involved in the Kosovo War. So that was an interesting thing, you know, with, with everything that's happening now with two new countries about to join NATO and 
you know, some tension there as far as do we get involved with all these massacres that we're finding out about. So there's some, there's definitely some cause for concern there um, with the trends, but. Uh, Absolutely. Remember this time as well, of course, which yeah. was this, this, and, and you're saying this is when the war trial or the war crime started um, after the Kosovo um War after well, this was like war. right when NATO got involved in there in that, and then the, there was a no-fly zone implemented. Yeah, and yeah so there, all that got um, went down right at the end of at the beginning of '99, right? So that that was when all that happened. Yeah, I mean, I re I remember the times very well. Let me just go. Oh, year. Let me make this month. Yeah, and so the other thing, of course, was that was that. This this happened at the time. The famous clip again, and you look at the famous clip where where, he, where Clinton goes, "I did not have sexual relations with that woman, <laughs> right. Miss yeah. Levit, Miss Lewinsky, mm -hmm. and I need to get back and do my job." You know that whole finger wagging press conference happened then, yeah. and 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 this theme of getting away with it because I just went on this thing because I remember very clearly with the Iran Contra just utter disbelief, <clears throat> utter disbelief because I lived through Watergate. I saw. And I knew, I mean, I'd always been watching events. I knew that what Nixon did was a little, was a campaign violation. But then he started using the CIA and the FBI to exact revenge or to cover up and hide evidence so that he wouldn't get caught. That was why he was impeached. Iran-Contra was 10 times worse and every level. And really virtually no one, I mean, there was some small prison times, but it was prison vacation, right? It wasn't any big deal. They got away with it. Clinton as well. Now, but again, you, you can measure these violations of what happened with Monica Lewinsky against Iran Contra, but, but it's the same theme of now they're getting away with it. And the disappointment, because again, I remember people voted for Clinton. Clinton became disappointing anyway as a president very quickly because he moved to the center very quickly in his first term and became sort of like a Republican light. By his second term, though, he, he was very, he won a re-election by a very, you know, very, very, by a very wide margin, similar to the way Nixon did. Um, but this, this was a disappointing moment for him when he finally had to admit, and he did the other famous press conference, that I did, in fact, have sexual relations with Ms. Lewinsky. <laughs> and his, like, you know, the, the, it was those videos, the I didn't have it, and yes, I did, you know, that have that are now sort of ubiquitous. So you can see the shame, the disappointment. And he disappointed a lot of people, a lot of Democrats who defended him. And by the way, this is also, last thing, but this is important. This is also that same time when Hillary Clinton, first lady, started this whole thing about when she went on these talk shows and said, there's a there's been a whole vast right wing conspiracy against my husband the whole time. And I remember this stuff clearly. The whole vast right wing conspiracy. This was a Hillary Clinton statement. By the way, she wasn't wrong. <laughs> you want to look at a president that was hounded. Look at Bill Clinton. And he had um, that Whitewater investigation, pretty much his whole his whole presidency. And this finding out about this scandal with Lewinsky was part of Whitewater, which wasn't even part of anything. I mean, it, it was just talk about a fishing expedition. Again, I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying, but this also really started this endless investigations into, into presidents and whatnot. This was after a lot of investigating. So that's some sort of social context for this as well. And again, Reagan got away with Iran Contra. Clinton got away with, 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 with this scandal as well. And so part of it was just making an apology. Reagan came out and also just apologized. And he was like, you know, I didn't know this was going on. Uh, you know, <laughs> I didn't know that we're running a separate government out of the basement. Sorry. And Clinton also, his apology, however poorly executed it was, at least it seemed to be like he was owning up to it. So they largely forgave him for it. His poll numbers kind of went up afterwards. So similar kind of themes here with this Jupiter and Pisces and these leaders and getting away with it and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, just to draw parallels to right now, we've got the, the January 6th council, Security Council, looking into all that that happened last, you know, in, in January 6th, 2021. And so uh, doesn't give you a lot of hope about justice being served. But 
just to kind of draw parallels about that same the same stuff is going yeah, on. It's now. the same energy. Yeah. That's well, that's that's what we're looking at. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, the most recent one was in 2010, right? And the time where there was the the Greece bailout going on, and um, then w WikiLeaks, right? There was a big thing with WikiLeaks, and uh, talk about another thing that didn't come didn't result in anything, right? The, this document that was released by about the Iraq war showing 80% civilian casualties, right? And so just tragic stuff like we're seeing in Ukraine where there's so many innocent people being killed. And so, and then nothing, right? Nothing happens, right? Um, and then the second part of that transit was the, the Arab Spring where a lot of the the Arab countries were trying to be more democratic. And so there's a lot of revolutions and civil wars and, and still stuff that's still happening now, you know? Um, and then there's the big Japan earthquake and tsunami, 16,000 people. And then bin Laden, the, the capture and, and the killing of bin Laden also happened during that time. And then one thing that I just was looking at before we went on is I saw that, you know, in 1975, Microsoft, was founded. And then in 98, Google was founded. And then this last one, you could see the Instagram was founded. It's like, those are some big tech giants with the same, you know, founding chart with Jupiter and Pisces, right? So. Wow, that's big. <clears throat> just to show that kind of imagination and creativity and the expansion of Jupiter and, and, and how it connects us, how it inspires yeah. us. Because again, Microsoft, again, I remember when it actually really became a platform. So it was founded in 75 in that transit. But um, I wonder how close to the next time in 87 that people really started using it a lot. Because I remember really in early night, I remember the first time I saw Windows on computers and whatnot like in office applications and whatnot, you really started to see it. Again, it became sort of everywhere, at least by the early 90s, but probably late 80s, it started to penetrate the business um, market. But yeah, of course, I, I remember when Google came and before you had like Netscape Navigator and you had, lit, yeah, well. you, you didn't have a search engine, but you, you had indexes, like Yahoo used to be an index. Um, and so obviously Google came and changed the browser industry. And then, yeah, Instagram came and then we all became celebrities and 10 <laughs> notches dumber, I think. <laughs> well, I'm thankful for it in some ways. You know, I'm but... totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, but Instagram definitely has, um, it, it's it's taken a certain amount of, it's codified everything now. It's made, it's made the selfie, the, the like, for sure. You use it great. I mean, everything is just a tool. I'm just yeah. joking though about how if the if Facebook and uh, other things were bad enough for our attention span, Instagram are actually now TikTok. TikTok is <laughs> TikTok okay. has taken Instagram and and <laughs> jacked it up. So, you know, this is a good kind of overview of the different times that it's happened in the last 60 years just to kind of show the the similarities of what's happening right now and um a few here this last one though is really good though casey because it's the most recent yeah yeah as well to hang out here a little bit look at how much happened this last this last time there's a few other things that really highlight though but certainly i mean look at this you know bin laden cap um killed WikiLeaks. this this really has set off a whole new level of investigative journalism, shattering of illusions, talk about disappointment, shattering of illusions, all of those leaks of of drone footage, usually it's, it was mostly what it was. Um, Chelsea Manning um, uh, um, released the footage and WikiLeaks, you know, put it out e everywhere. Um, and so again, realizing all the atrocities that were done in the Iraq war, again, Bin Laden being killed, um, also, and this this Arab Spring again, yeah, this the, this revolution, which again also filled the world with hope that um, some of the some of the oppressive forces in 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 the Arab world would abate. Um, 
and there was also the fear that it would lead to something worse. I don't really know what the verdict is at that point or at this point. Certainly, it seems, although you don't have certain dictators there, this, the cohesion of the society is also not what it was. The same thing with Iraq. Saddam Hussein was a dictator. But one of the things about dictatorships is things run on time because somebody's like making sure it does. But and, you know, but there's profit getting stolen, all this stuff. So it's ambiguous. But that was the last that was the last um, transit. Yeah. And, you know, just to kind of show the potential of it, like that Jupiter you know, in Pisces especially has a lot of that, um, you know, the symbolism of the first two nakshatras in Pisces are the deathbed, right? So there, that's uh, definitely a theme that you can see, like a lot of deaths happened, either war or these massive natural disasters where there's a lot of deaths happening. Look at these aspects of Saturn on the Jupiter, though, too. There's a lot mm -hmm. of accountability going on here. Yeah. And this is a theme I want to end with, too, with this recurrence, is there's a lot of a, themes of accountability here because you've got Saturn aspecting Jupiter here, right, during yeah. that transit. So you see accountability with bin Laden, with um, maybe with the, with, the, with the Arab leaders who were, uh, who, who were oppressing the people and the people wanting to rise up. Right, WikiLeaks, too, right? WikiLeaks, yeah. sorry, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Right. That's an exact aspect right there from not just Saturn, but Saturn and Virgo. Right. Where it's uh, exactly. And yeah. um, did you have the dates here with uh, with, with it's fine if you don't. I just want um, I meant the exact dates of some of these disclosures. That's fine. It's so much data. It's fine that you don't. It's uh, it would have been near the end of like in the. The fall of 2010 there. So you see the uh, yeah, it's, uh, Jupiter goes back and then he'll hit it again here yeah. Um, yeah. around this time as well. When we get into early 2011, this is this is around the bin Laden time. Right. Yeah. Look at see. Look at see bin Laden. I'm just going to look at it here. Bin Laden. Oh, what was that date? Yeah, it that was May 2nd. Really to the end of it. Yeah, it was May 2nd, 2011. Yeah. So that would be right at the end right at the end yeah, yeah. go back a week may 2nd so yeah it was like right there right at the yeah. end mm -hmm. yeah so he's about to move into aries at that time right but so again this is that's a big swath of time there right and so now if we go forward i'll go forward 10 years and see where we are now two years so again this is where we just came from so we go back you know this was 2019 2020 this was like right when COVID started. Right. April 2020. 2021. This is like May of last year. And then this is like May of this year. Now he's going to poke his head in. But if we go forward a few months, we're going to get this recurrence and we're going to get them aspecting each other. This right. is an aspect. So this is the recurrence of the 60 year cycle that started that started it off. That started this one. This 64 with Beatlemania, MLK. I have a dream, JFK assassinated, um, uh, you know, um, all that stuff, all of that. Uh, this is right now we're having the recurrence of that. And so one of the reasons why you see that was such an impactful time. Again, look at how many things shifted in that one. Look at the dignity of the planets. And by yeah. the way, the biggest shift that happened is I was born. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> and look at how I shifted world history <laughs> no but i'm having my i'm having my recurrence transit too i was born in 63 i was born july 63 i know i know i look so young and vibrant but the gray <laughs> no anyway so um but you see the dignity here saturn is in capricorn and it's aspecting jupiter in pisces this is not just your average kind of recurrence because again jupiter saturn return every 60 years Right. Like so they they did a recurrence last year when Saturn was in. So people who were born in mostly 62 last year or actually this year, they're having the 60 year um, at some point. But a lot of people who were born in 62 had Saturn here and Jupiter in Aquarius, for example. So, again, these things aren't pro forma, but every 60 years you come back to a Saturn Jupiter recurrence transit is what it means where they come back to where they were when you were born. 
So this particular Saturn-Jupiter recurrence is very powerful because they were dignified, very dignified at that time. And you can see it by how much intensity happened. Saturn aspecting Jupiter is not just aspecting, but in their own signs. Saturn is in Capricorn, Jupiter is in Pisces. We saw the last one when we had the Bin Laden and whatnot. Saturn and Jupiter were aspecting. Jupiter was in Pisces, but Saturn was in Virgo, not as not as much gravitas as Saturn in Capricorn. So that's why now it, this is a huge recurrence transit for the for this time that Jupiter is going through Pisces. It's similar, exact similar recurrence to JFK assassinated, Martin Luther King rising to national prominence, which led to civil rights, um, Beatlemania, like a new wave of and completely changing the game. These are three absolutely transformative things that happen in the same, at the same time when this transit occurred. Right, our brains latch on to the some of these negative events, but think about all the the way music changed from the Beatles, and you know, next thing you know, we've got like Led Zeppelin and all that, right? Is all that stuff, all the creativity, right? Because that's that's the real juice of Jupiter and Pisces is that. The imagination like that that someone as the role model like they they blazed a new trail and you're like man that gives me so many new ideas right and you know you do that for us too where you're you'll put this thing out here and then they're like man that's so cool i'm gonna next thing you know i'm doing these notes right where all these these things that you can do that inspire someone else to do it in their own way which is a little different and, and also really cool you know so all that's there too right um but you know i like to do a little you know i've got a strong saturn in my chart too so i like to bring things down to earth here let's before we get all excited about jupiter giving us all the candy from the candy store look at it, it it's happened every 12 years so where were you at in 2010 1998 1987 you know However far back it goes for you, just kind of think about those times. And, uh, you know, I've had some good times and bad times during those ones, too, where I was like, OK, <laughs> you know, but uh, definitely. This is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Don't forget about the good stuff. Right. When we're bringing in some of the, you know, JFK assassinated was a time where a lot of people were low, really low. Like think about people were crying and. It was a big, massive feeling of like hopelessness at that moment, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, so the, again, the thing to look at is just the transformation that happened at that time and how um, it, one might say, and I don't think they would be wrong, that a lot of the the reasons that JFK, that, that it could very well be um, one of those things where he wanted to change and make the democracy much more of a liberal democracy. He definitely wanted to get us off of the, off the federal reserve. There was, there's so much, I don't want to go into here so much, but the notion that there could be a conspiracy to have killed JFK is not even close to um, hard to fathom considering what he really wanted to be doing. Uh, you know, he was definitely of the same mindset as Eisenhower who said, there's a, where do you think the term industrial, um, um, where the term military industrial complex came from, came from Eisenhower. And we're like living in the throes of the military industrial complex. And Kennedy was just as antagonistic toward that and fed and getting off the gold standard, all this kind of stuff, which our entire fiat capital economy and bank banking regime is completely uses to control everything. So <laughs> there's no question that if they're going to look, a very legitimate case could be said for why JFK was outed. Um, and I'm saying this because this is also, again, Jupiter's in Pisces. So the, the power, the leader that inspired us was also taken out <clears throat> by Saturn, uh, Saturn, harsh realities and corrupt realities and the corrupt world. And so again, we're looking now at a lot of things ahead that, are um obviously as we make this recording you have this 
this war in Europe that we haven't had really since World War II with refugees and a nation state invading another sovereign border like that. Just it's not it wasn't an internal conflict like like Yugoslavia and the Serbs and Croats and whatnot with ancient tribal war. This is literally a dictator saying, OK, I'm claiming this land as my own, which we haven't had in Europe. It haven't had even in the world for a long time. So, again, the parallels are uh, for the potential to have it be massive destruction and devastation are high. But also, again, we see things like assassinations um, even during that time, um, but also hope with, again, Martin Luther King also such a transformative, inspiring figure. Um, I'd love to see a renaissance in the arts. <laughs> because we ain't got much of them right now. And as a musician, it's been the great lament of my adult life, how the arts have gone in the toilet. Cause I grew up at a time, particularly with music, where it was like a, a, a embarrassment of riches where every ass, every genre of music was just absolutely amazing. Now, I don't know. So maybe we'll find it. We're finding it in alternative ways, but you know, culture in general is impoverished in this way. I think it's one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why we turn to these leaders, these idiotic politicians and social leader, uh, uh, social media influencers for inspiration. Our inspirations used to be people like the Beatles or even just all the musicians throughout the 70s and 80s and whatnot. These were the things that inspired us collectively. We had a collective inspiration. And it was great art and great music and great thought. Now we don't have it. Now the things that are inspires are these binary politicians. Are you, you know, pro-Trump, anti-Trump? What about Biden? What about this one? AOC, Bernie. Like these are the things that inspires. Back then, even though all this stuff was going on, like with the Iran Contra and all like that, everybody we looked at all of them suspicious. Jimmy Carter was suspicious. Bill Clinton was suspicious. Reagan, Bush, all of it. None of them. None of them were our saviors. We didn't think any of them had the answer. The answers was in something transcendent, and we've lost that. This is why we're so. This is why it's a dangerous time. I would say. So my sort of social commentary in that regard is that hopefully maybe this Saturn Jupiter now that we're living in can bring a resurgence of great inspired thought leaders like MLK and Renaissance in music or and and the arts like you know, like we saw with the Beatles or, and whatnot, and get us collectively focused on something bigger than just all of this, all these, all these people that just want to exploit us. They're all just, it's all propaganda now. Casey, anything you'd like to say about that? Yeah. And just to add, you know, to reinforce what I said earlier is that when the these two plants are really powerful in their own signs, they bring the goods right where they can deliver the results of your karma with that, whatever that might be. If you're pie in the sky, never really realistic, the Saturn karma is going to be really hard. But if you're in this Saturn energy and your Jupiter isn't really active, that's going to feel disappointing, right? So it's it's a good time to really focus on those higher octaves of the planetary energy, which you described really beautifully with the leaves. Um, that Jupiter is like, the reason why we're keep getting disappointed is because we keep picking the wrong people to look up to. Right. And so look at, look at people that are more inspiring that have uh, connected to bigger teachings and to something that's kind of demonstrated over and over again, not just one time where they did something inspiring, but every day they're living that, right. That's a strong Jupiter and Saturn where they're a role model by experience and by demonstration. Right. And then, that, yeah, that's someone great. said here, our Art Riot said, true, we never loved our political leadership. They never asked for that either. That's so immature. Right. We hired people based on how we thought they would do the job. Yes, there's propaganda. There was this or that. But you didn't have people get up just so wildly uninformed, lying like crazy, saying preposterous things just to get us to believe in them as some like savior figure. And anyone caught thinking that way was embarrassing. No, I mean, again, if you if your friends would have thought, you know, all these, I mean, you had some bumper sticker politician stuff, a little bit of it, but now it's so egregious. It's like thinking that any of these politicians are going to like save us or that they're worthy of all of that. It's politics. It's a job. Now it's become such a, and I, I'm telling you the reason I'm saying this is because I think that one of the main reasons is because we don't have raw, authentic, inspired 
culture back then, it was easy to see the difference between like, you know, Bill Clinton and like, I don't know, you know, um, you know, let's say uh, Michael Jackson or something. You know, I'm thinking of like a like a famous, you know, singer or someone with talent or great film or, you know, Nirvana, the band or, you know, like whatever the band was. It's like, man, this this was, you know, David Bowie or John Lennon or something like these great artists. We we could see the difference. It's like artists were always making commentary on the folly of the politicians and the this and the that. That was the that was the um, that was the point. Most of the art the arts were always making fun of politics and all of that stuff. Now it's supplanted that. Now we don't even have. Now most of the art is also some kind of at least music. So much of it is is based on politics and political correctness. It's it's very very different. Um, and again, if you didn't live through that, it's hard to convey that. But some that's why some of us who did live through it were like, "Don't you get this? Is this is actually what <laughs> it used to be like that? We didn't used to attach our whole thing. And when these politicians said nonsensical garbage, they paid the price for it. You couldn't have someone get up and lie like a complete fool and ever get close to being elected. They would have been absolutely humiliated and embarrassed." And it's a different world now. So hopefully we can return to something where we also start to see the difference again and have authentic people that we look up to in the public and things like that. And agree. like Curious One said, those artists were people like us. They weren't manufactured by corporations or fake social media cultivation. Yeah, I mean, right now, again, there's so much of this kind of artifice as well. So... I'm thinking and hoping that again, Saturn is that truth and Jupiter is also, and that truth and how it comes into play again. This is a 60 year recurrence of those times. And maybe it's time for us to get real, get real again, get real about what's going on. Stop looking to be led because we're so fearful of and so easily coerced that, that we can be inspired by things that are authentically inspirational. Yeah, just like I'm doing, you're doing. You're, we're focused on the art. You know, we're focused on doing the, doing the thing we love, right? That's what the Beatles were. They just love to play music and they love to do that thing. And that's what's inspiring is when someone's actually in love with the thing that they're creating. And so, if you can just focus on that thing, that thing that just gives you joy, and then instead of being you know, looking for likes or looking for attention or, you know, wanting to be famous, but not having anything to be famous for, just kind of, kind of plug into the teaching and just let yourself be a channel for that thing and to see what happens. Well, Casey, again, I thank you so much for coming here today. And again, um, you, if, if, Folks should check uh, Casey out, especially on Instagram. He uh, does a lot of his uh, stuff there. He posts a lot of these diagrams there and whatnot. You see Gold Star Astrology is his is his um, Instagram profile. And again, subscribe, leave a comment um, here if you like. And again, I just put the um, I just put the slide again for the personal forecasts, um, the 2022 Vedic Astrology again, so you can see how these ten important shifts that I talked about will also um, help your life. Because again, all of the shifts from the 2022 forecast that I did um, are also impacting your life in a unique way based on your rising sign, based on your ascendant. So um, please check that out. Casey, any, any final thoughts? Thanks again, man. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for everybody for joining us this afternoon and uh, appreciate everybody's time. All right. Bye-bye.